Hi everyone and welcome to the Syncretism Society Virtual Academy. My name is Mehmet and the name of today's video is The Great Conjunction and the Royal Wedding of 1981. As some of you may know or some of you may not know, we recently had a Great Conjunction which is when uh, Jupiter and Saturn conjunct on the same degree in a sign. Um, it happened last year in 2020. Uh, on the 21st of December, where they conjunct uh, both at zero degrees of Aquarius. And usually when this happens, um, there are significant changes on Earth. And um, yeah, as we know that really there was there has been significant changes recently in relation to the whole um, Corona pandemic, so called. But um, yeah, what I wanna do today is speak a bit about what the Great Conjunction is. And then I'm gonna look at how that ties into the Royal Wedding in 1981 of Princess Diana and Charles. And we're gonna talk about the sun and the moon symbolism and Leo and Cancer symbolism, because that ties into kings and queens and male and female and union in alchemy. And then once we've tied into, once we've had a look at that, we're gonna look at the, the chart of uh, the day when the Royal Wedding took place. And there's some really interesting placements which I wanna talk about. And then after that, I'm gonna look at um, some pictures from that day and we're gonna see the symbolism uh, in the palaces and um, the entrance to the palace and how it relates to like Boaz and Jackin and all the esoteric uh, Masonic symbology. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, uh, share my screen and then we'll get into it. So just bear with me for a moment. So just sharing my screen. Let me just bring this out of the way and go here make this bigger i'll move this down here so let's go in. so let's get into it let me move this back up right so i'm just going to read an article this was from the guardian newspaper in britain which just gives you a bit of background on what the Great Conjunction is and the significance of it. So the title is The Great Conjunction Kicks Off a New Astrological Epoch. So what now? On Monday, Jupiter and Saturn, which are actually more than 400 miles apart, will appear to come together in the night sky forming what is called a Great Conjunction. This is one of the series of meetings the planets makes roughly every 20 years due to Jupiter's orbit of less than 12 years around the sun lining up with Saturn's, which is 29.5 years long. On the night of the conjunction, the planets will seem as if they have separated by about one fifth of a diameter of the typical full moon appearing to touch or form a single brilliant heavenly body. Besides the visual dazzle, the event has special significance through an astrological lens. It marks the official shift from a 200 year period during which Jupiter and Saturn made conjunctions primarily in earth signs into a 200 year period of conjunctions in air signs, making a new making the advent of a new epoch in a larger 800 year macro cycle. For those that don't know, like I've mentioned before, a conjunction is when two planets are in the same degree or pretty much next to each other in, in an astrological chart. And yeah, and here it spoke about how uh, previous to this one, most uh, conjunctions of uh, Jupiter and Saturn were in Earth signs whereas now it's switching over to air signs, and that has some significance, but that will be in the next part I read. So moving on, according to the historians of astrology, Earth periods, like the one we're about to exit, focus on materialism, hierarchies, resource acquisition, territory, control, 
and empire stabilization. See the late Roman Empire, high middle ages and industrial capitalism. Astrologers believe that air periods, by contrast, favor the renovation of hierarchies, decentralization, shifting orders, rapid translation, mass mobility, trade networks, and rampant spirituality. Relevant historical examples that astrologers cite include the rise of and fall of Alexander the Great's empire, leading to the network of city-states in the Greek-speaking Hellenistic world. The fall of the Roman Empire, the division of the Mongol Empire after Genghis Khan's death and the plague destabilizing the effect on feudalism in Europe. Thematically, air periods tend to foster information ages that focus on the intellectual, the immaterial and the ideological, though not necessarily in a peaceful manner. So that's very interesting how it's talking about when we had great conjunctions in earth signs the theme of the changes were all materialistic but since they've happened when they happen in air signs uh, the changes are more of a spiritual nature and it's very relevant to what is going on today because obviously this is why they're trying to uh, make us have vaccines and like push fear into us because they know we're coming into a spiritual awakening. And if we come into a spiritual awakening, this is this doesn't work into the hands of the elites and the people who control us because once we get in touch with our spiritual selves, we can see that we've been fooled and um, we get to know ourselves and become a better version of ourselves. But that doesn't suit the system because the system need us to be more materialistic so we can buy their products so they can um, benefit and make profit from. So I'll just move on to the next part. Sorry, that was a bit of a long winded explanation, but I thought I'll just touch up on it just to give you guys a bit more insight rather than just reading it. So moving on, thinkers have used the Jupiter Saturn conjunctions to track the history for thousands of years. Jonas Kepler's early 17th century trigon diagrams and famous ephemeria from the beginning of our current macro cycle, Jupiter and Saturn are the slowest and furthest away of planets available to the, to the naked human eye. And the function of, and the function as the shorthands of the astrological clock. Sketching the broad strokes of an era, in astrological term, Jupiter signifies expansion, growth and coherence, but can also lead to cancerous hypertrophy. Saturn represents the opposite principle of limitation, structure, containment and often considered a cruel taskmaster of the zodiac. Together they are like life and de death, rap and weft and their conjunctions signal key moments in the formation of the collective reality, exactly, which is what I said before I started reading this. So I would say it's interesting that uh, this time round is conjunct in the sign of Aquarius. And Aquarius is a very humanitarian sign. It's the water bearer. It's about spirituality. And it is ruled by Saturn, which gives it an extra kind of strength, if that makes sense. But here it explains how uh, Jupiter um, signifies growth and expansion. So for me, that symbolizes the spiritual side, whereas Saturn symbolizes limitation, structure and containment. So this connects with the whole social distancing thing and uh, staying in home and and not going next to someone so it's like that's like kind of that whole idea is based upon Saturn so that was just a quick introduction into what um, the great conjunction is and just a little brief history on it so moving on now I want to show you a clip from uh, a movie called the dark crystal which was made in the late uh, no, in the early, I think it was the early mid um, 1980s, 
And for anyone who hasn't watched this movie, I know that all the people on the Syncretism Society would love this movie. It's basically about um, the struggle between the elite and the spiritual people. And you have uh, a group called the Skeksis, who are the people that rule the planet and who are the kings and queens. And then you have the mystics, who are the spiritual people. But there's a scene in here where they actually talk about the great conjunction and the significance of it. So what I want to do, I'm just going to play you this clip. It's three minutes long and uh, it's a very good clip. Right. So moving on from that, yeah, like I said, even a lot of people actually think that movies are all fantasy, but believe it or not, once you really start watching movies, once you've looked into like occult stuff and esoteric subjects and you know the astrology and you know all alchemy and all the different sciences you'll realize that there is actually a lot of truth in movies especially disney movies and kids movies and yeah as you could see um from that clip the old lady who had the ram's horns was called augra and obviously au org is to do with um 
gold and Ra is to do with the sun. That's just me breaking her name down etymologically. But yeah, they tell us these stuff in movies, but we don't take them seriously because we just think they're fantasies. But once, like I said, once you do your research, you realize there's a lot more to these messages that they're leaving us in the movies. So yeah, this is uh, the chart of um, the Great Conjunction on the 21st of December, 2020. And as you can see, Saturn and Jupiter are both in zero degrees of Aquarius right here at the start and the sun was in zero degrees of Capricorn and in the UK that was the day of um, the announcement of like the second big lockdown there was a massive massive lockdown pretty much for like five months and they announced it on this day so again once you understand astrology and um, you understand particular conjunctions and what they mean and when it happens and how many, how often it happens. And in this way, you cannot predict what's going to happen, but you can kind of be aware that something big is about to happen. Because I remember even before Corona, I was telling a lot of my friends, a lot of my family, that something really big is going to happen in 2020 because of this conjunction. Obviously, I didn't know what it would... I, I didn't think it would be a pandemic. I thought it would be, like, a massive war and stuff. But, yeah, they threw the pandemic at us and literally it has changed the world. Like, um, also, before the pandemic, a lot of people were saying, like, in 2018, 17 times, that this day will uh, be the day of the new world order. And... You can't argue against that. If, you, if you're really truly looking at what is going on in the world today, it is the new world order. It doesn't matter if you're Christian, Muslim, Jewish, Hindu, Sikh, whatever religion or race you are, everyone is wearing a mask. And the mask is the symbol of uh, the new world order, unfortunately. But let's hope that... Um, yeah, it won't be for too long and we can just use this time as a lesson to kind of learn from and grow and evolve spiritually. So, yeah, this is the chart. As you can see, uh, Jupiter and Saturn conjunct in zero degrees Aquarius on the 21st of December 2020. So moving on, what I want to now talk about is the royal wedding which was on July the 29th, 1981. And the reason why I want to talk about this event is because, again, it happened during a great conjunction, which I will show you later because I'm going to get the chart up of the day of the actual wedding. But what I want to do first, uh, before we get into that, is talk about this royal symbol, which is the lion and the unicorn. And the first time I came across this symbol, I started looking into the meaning of it is when I was watching a Michael Tazarian video when he was talking about the Queen's coronation. And he mentioned that uh, these two symbols were the symbols of the sun and the moon and Leo and Cancer. So obviously Leo would be the lion and um, the moon would be the unicorn. So as we know, obviously, um, the moon symbolizes femininity, the sun symbolizes masculinity, the moon symbolizes silver, the sun symbolizes gold. So it's that yin yang, male, female, hot, cold, sun and moon. That is the basic symbology behind this symbol. And also, these are the two signs that rule in summer and and obviously the sun and moon in the zodiac only have only rule one sign, whereas the other planets rule two signs. So these are the defining signs in the zodiac. And yeah, so you've got the sun and the moon, uh, like I said, hot and cold, uh, masculine, feminine, king, queen, etc. 
So, yeah, so obviously, um, on a basic level, the king would be Charles or the sun would correlate with Charles and the moon would correlate with Diana. Well, Diana actually means the moon as well. So, yeah, moving on, as you can see, this is an old um, description. I think it's done from the artist Joffre Boschart. Who's, I'm going to use a few of these pictures. He does like paintings and artworks in relation to the occult. And if I can, if I'll zoom in here, you can see here the masculine uh, male has the crown, who's the king on the side of the sun. And then you have the feminine on the side of the moon. And in the middle here, you have the union of the two, which would kind of correspond with like the Ida and Pingala or Mercury, the, the hermaphrodite. But also what's very, and obviously you can see that the Ida and Pingala here on uh, this goat character, which relates to Baphomet, as you can see, because he's got one arm up and one arm down. This is a symbolism of uh, heaven and earth. It's a union of male and female um, spirituality and matter, etc. But the reason why I'm showing this image with this goat, because once I show you the next image, this was actually um, the mascot for the royal wedding in 1981, ironically. So yeah, again, I'm just going to show you like some memorabilia in relation to the royal wedding and showing you again how it connects to the whole Leo Cancer, uh, male, female, sun and moon, gold and silver. As you can see, you got on the side of Charles, you have Leo, the you have the lion, which is the sun, and then on the side of Diana, you have the unicorn, which is the moon. And again. We can see uh, this is an old alchemic uh, illustration. You see pater, which means paternal. You see soul, which is the sun. And then you see mater, which is mata, mother. And then you've got luna here. Again, this was the official program of the royal wedding, which was the royal symbol, which here where it says ish din, that means I serve. So what I want to now do before I get into the actual chart of the royal wedding is I want to read a bit about Leo and the lion, how it relates to the king and the sun. And then I want to read a bit about um, the unicorn and how it relates to the moon and cancer. The, the sun lion bit will be short because that's common knowledge, but a lot of people don't know that the unicorn relates to cancer and the crab and the moon. So that bit will be a bit longer. So I'm just gonna read a bit about the lion and the myths of a lion. The lion is the king of the jungle, just like Leo. It's not difficult to see why this suits them so perfectly. Just like these big cats, Leos are powerful, dominating and dignified. Leo is also known for being an adventurer and natural leader. In addition, they are naturally confident, which translates to a glamorous, outgoing personality that makes them naturally attractive. The Leo sign is often referred to as the ruler of the zodiac. They rule the roost. Whether it's for work, play, you can accept that a Leo will be the one in charge. Like, like the true royal, royalty of the zodiac, Leo is driven by their desire to be admired and loved by all. They feel most at home in the limelight and want the others to remember them by their helpfulness and kindness. So this is an article I'm going to read, which I found online. It's called The Crab, the Scarab, the Unicorn and the Chariot. Let me, yeah, that's big enough. I was going to zoom in yet. Yeah, I'll just zoom in a bit. So the crab cancer. Cancer is one of the two is one of the two great gates of the zodiac that opens the door into incarnation. Cancer admits the soul to humanity. The door of incarnation in cancer is preferred as am, preferred as ambition urges from us from life to life. This is the secret of rebirth. Eventually, 
disappointed by the worthlessness of earthly gratification, we begin to orient ourselves towards the gradual growth of spiritual ambition and the desire for liberation. Yeah, the reason why it says that cancer is one of the great gates, because obviously um, human souls come into existence through the tropic of cancer, through the moon, because obviously uh, for those that know about the seven planets, the moon is the closest to the earth and Saturn is the furthest away from the earth. So it goes moon, Mercury, Venus, Sun, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. So the Tropic of Cancer is uh, the gateway of men and the Tropic of Capricorn is the gateway of the gods. So that's what it's talking about here when it's referring to Cancer as a gate. So moving on, uh, the scarab and creation and rebirth. Depicted as the god Kepri in ancient Egypt, the scarab beetle rolls balls of dung across the ground and acts that the Egyptians saw as a symbol of the forces that move the sun across the sky. So Kepri was considered a solar deity. Young scarabs having seen laid as eggs within the dung ball emerge from it fully formed. Therefore, Kepri also represented creation and rebirth, and he was specifically connected with the rising of the sun and the mythical creation of the world. Egyptians connected his name with the Egyptian language verb kepa, meaning develop or coming into being. Unicorn, magic miracles, purity, innocence, and enchantment. The pale white unicorn is an ancient symbol for the moon. This magical and enchanting animal appears to only a rare few and has the ability to bestow magic and miracles and wisdom to those who are pure of heart and virtuous in their deeds. Its name, the unicorn in Latin and the constellation represents a mythical single, a mythical single horned horse creature. Monocreos lies in the northern sky on the celestial equator in the quadrant allotted to the constellation of Cancer. This identifies it with the northerly sign of Cancer known as the Gate of Earth. The chariot, armed self reliant, command one's own destiny. In the tarot, the chariot card number symbolizes cancer on the battlefield a chariot is autonomous it fights alone not with other troops or cavalry the crab moves from one plane to the next water to land back and back again and the chariot is viewed as viewing as moving likewise from conscious to unconscious earthly to spiritual the chariot is a card of contradiction it is about sideways battles yet also about full speed ahead. It is about the hard exterior and the, soft and the soft interior, the light and the dark, the water and the shore, the moon and the sun. It is the sphinx, which is also often a symbol of cancer, the lion and the man united, a mystery. So now we've got a bit of background on how... Um, the sun is the king and represents uh, male energy and the moon symbolizes feminine energy and is to do with cancer and the sun is, like I said, male, king and is to do with Leo. What I want to now do is look at the chart on the day of the royal wedding when Charles and Diana got married. And it's very, very interesting because like I said, it happened on a great conjunction. And you can see here, Jupiter and Saturn are conjunct in five degrees of Libra. And very, very ironically, um, uh, Libra, the sign is about marriage partnerships. So it's very ironic that they got married on uh, the day of the great conjunction with the two planets, Jupiter and Saturn, in the sign of relationships and marriage. So that was the first thing that really um, 
right? And you think, oh, wow, let me look at the rest of the chart. So as we said, as I've just been saying, um, the sun correl correlates with Leo and male and the moon correlates with feminine and cancer. And we can see here on the day of the wedding, the sun was in Leo and then the moon was in cancer. So again, it's perfectly lined up. The, uh, the, the Jupiter and Saturn in the sign of relationships and marriage, the sun in the sign of Leo and male, the king, Charles, and then the moon in the sign of cancer, feminine, uh, Diana. And also, just to add to that, Diana is actually a cancer, a sun sign is cancer. Charles isn't, but yeah, that's just an extra note. Um, and yeah, and it's just, it's crazy how it's aligned so perfect. I mean, a lot of people would just say, oh, this is coincidence. But when it comes to the royals and the upper echelons and the elites, it, nothing is a coincidence. Everything is always planned because most of their ceremonies and their stuff are, are basically rituals, which are based on stuff like the Kabbalah and um, all the esoteric sciences, which I will show you once we uh, see some pictures from the day of the wedding. But yeah, also what's very interesting, it uh, was just before an eclipse as well. As you can see uh, the north node right next to the sun so as the sun got closer i think it was a couple days later uh, there would have been an eclipse which is very very interesting as well so yeah like um it was looking at this chart which got me to do this whole video uh, in the first place because i was looking at great conjunctions and i thought oh, let me go back and see what major events happened during other great conjunctions so i looked at 1981 and the royal wedding came up so then i thought let me look at the chart and see if there's anything interesting and as you can see it makes total sense for anyone who understands esoteric knowledge and astrology and what each sign means and where particular planets are placed and rulerships it makes total, total sense. So, uh, yeah, like I said, the elites and the royals and the upper echelons, all of their stuff is based on esoteric knowledge in relation to astrology, the heavens, uh, masculine, femininity, masculine and femininity, balance, duality, unity. But unfortunately, they um, use it in a negative way. And uh, this is something called the Royal Arch, as you can see here. Uh, the Arch would correspond with, in theology, the Ark or the Ark of Noah. And this is the top half of the Zodiac, which is spring and summer, as you can see, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer at the top. And then Leo, like I said, you've got Cancer and Leo next to each other, all in the summer. And then you've got Virgo and Libra. And then you can see this again in um, art in relation to uh, the Royal Arch and the two pillars of Boaz and Jack. And as you can see, the sun and the moon, uh, which would be king, queen, male, female, Di uh, Charles, Diana, etc. And then also you can see here the tree in the center of the garden which is very interesting. So this part, what I'm doing is like, I'm showing one picture from the day of the event and then a corresponding piece of art that connects with it. So yeah, I'll just mention the Royal Art. This is just a little quote of what the Royal Arch is. In England and Wales, there is a inducible link craft between Freemasonry and the Royal Arch, with the Royal Arch being considered the completion of the Freemason's journey in pure ancient astrology. So as you can see, let me zoom this picture in here. 
you can see here, this is a picture from the day of the wedding. It's a group picture. You can see the two pillars uh, in these gold bits here, and you can also see one there and one here. And as you can see, you can't see the full picture, but you can see that this part here is uh, there's an arc, which again corresponds with this arch or arc, which is the royal arc. And at the top symbolizes strength, which is why uh, it connects with like the strength being Cancer and Leo, the, the strength in because that's the um, that's when the sun is at its uh, strength because this is the hottest part of the year. Oh yeah, also moving before I go on to that. Um, as you can see here, there is like a acronym or an abbreviation, HTWSSTKS. And what this stands for is Hiram Tyrium, Widow's Son, Sender Fourth, King Solomon. And it's interesting that um, the whole royal uh, families rituals and the wedding and everything their buildings are based on the royal arch and the two pillars of freemasonry and it's interesting that um charles actually ended up being a widow which actually gives me a bit more suspicion that we well we all know that the whole diana thing was a setup but once i realized how all the rituals and all the ceremonies are connected to freemasonry this Hiram Tyrion widow son, sender fourth King Solomon, makes even more sense now. Obviously, um, Charles is not a widow, he's a widower, but it's the same thing, basically. A widower is a man who loses his wife. So, again, you can see the whole, the whole thing is just one big ritual based on esoteric science and astrology. And again, yeah, this is the keystone uh, of the Freemasons. This is Higher Antirian, Widow's Son, Sender Fourth, King Solomon. So, yeah, this is just Diana walking into the cathedral. And as you can see, she's walking through the two pillars of Boaz and Jackin. And you can see here on the floor as well the checkered. Um, the checkered floor of the black and white, which is also a symbology of male and female. The black being male and the female being white, which is why at weddings they wear black and white, because it's a symbol of yin and yang. So, yeah, as again, you can see here, Boaz and Jackin, the royal arch with all the signs of uh, the zodiac, and then you've got the 64 uh checkered uh squares which is on uh the chessboard 64 because six and four equals 10 which equals the digital root of one so he's talking about unity yeah again again you can see charles here walking into the cathedral with the checkered floor Again, this is a three mason uh, apron. You can see again, Boaz and Jackin. You can see the moon and the sun. And you can see the checkered floor once again. Again, Charles standing next to uh, the checkered floor. Another three mason uh, piece of art with Boaz and Jackin, uh, the sun and the moon checkered floor and this is the all-seeing eye uh, again we can see uh, another shot of diana going through the two pillars and yeah this is from an artist called joffre boschart uh, if you haven't checked out his work you must do he's got a whole series on the zodiac where he does a piece of artwork for each sign this is amazing this one is actually for libra and you can see the sun and moon symboli symbology of um, in relation to balance and relationships and male and female, etc. And again, you can see the, uh, the floor with the black and white cubes. 
And yeah, also, this is another one from uh, Joffre Boschart. Again, this actually um, coincides with Gemini, but it has the unicorn and lion symbology in it, which again symbolizes the female and male um, polarities and the lion connecting with the sun and the unicorn connecting with the moon and you've got the red shift blue shift and the caduceus with the Eda and pingala connecting to mercury and finally i just want to finish up with this this isn't actually to do with the royal wedding this is to do with uh, the coronation of the queen and i took this from like i said at the beginning michael tazarin's video who give me the info on how uh, the lion and the unicorn re relates to the sun and the moon and Cancer and Leo. And he shows that how uh, when the queen walked in uh, to the cathedral for her coronation, it was done uh, in the imagery of the tree of life. So I'll just read this quickly to finish off. It says, Kabbalistic imagery is also used during the coronation ceremony. The queen is positioned at the center of the six maidens. The form of the procession is is reminiscent of the Kabbalistic tree of life. The procession then passes through the second portal into the church toward the altar. The company pass along the blue carpet symbolizing water, the river, the river of life, time or knowledge, etc. Interestingly, the word Hebrew means men of the river. So let me stop sharing my screen. So yeah. That was uh, my lesson and video on the Great Conjunction and the Royal Wedding and how it correlated with the Sun and the Moon and Leo and Cancer, and also how the Royals and the Elites, uh, rituals and ceremonies are all based on esoteric sciences. If I didn't make anything clear or you need to ask any questions, feel free to inbox me on the Virtual Academy and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Peace, love and blessings. I'm out.